hour. Happy hour. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. All security! We met young Ryan Hoppy. Ryan. Okay, and your name? Ryan Hoppy. Okay, Ryan Hoppy. Where do you live? Probably the nice. Ah, so you're from the rich north suburbs. What's going on, Ryan Hoppy? This is Tony Rowe. Your buddy, Ryan Hoppy. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows who Ryan Hoppy is. You never have to worry about offending Ryan Hoppy. Isn't he like seven foot tall? He's yeah. seven foot tall. He's And he's only, a, he's a kid. He's right. a kid. He's, uh, he's got good mentors. And he's motivated. Happy hour. Happy hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? He never holds back, and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. Oh, yeah. Eight five six forty nine hoppy. It's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. And for all the info on Hoppy Hour, go to Ryan Hoppy Radio.com. And as always, this following show. Is being brought to you by Mattress by Appointment Hillsboro. When I tell you that he is the best in the bay, Dwayne, the mattress guy over at Mattress by Hillsboro, Mattress by Appointment Hillsboro, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. 813 452 5555. It's 813 452 5555. All righty. Happy Hot Topic. What the hell is going on in the world of Nene? I'm already out here, uh, husband stiller, and this is too much. And there ain't nobody out here stealing husbands. Right. So let me explain in uh, English. Uh, she's being accused of uh, taking someone's husband. I would never. Nene Leaks denies stealing her boyfriend, Naomi Nisella JCO. After be- I love when these women date these men that are married and then they end up going with the side checks and they're like just lying. They're like, oh yeah, I totally didn't ruin a marriage. Cause like, yeah, you can fall in love with the side chick, but don't act like you weren't the uh, homewrecker. After being sued by his estranged wife, Malomine Taimai CO, what a name. for allegedly busting up their marriage. Yeah, she busted up. Just try to show each other a little more love. <laughs> <laughs> I have HPV. So do I, I think. On Thursday, the Real Housewives of Atlanta star hopped on Instagram Live to shut down claims with a little humor. Oh, the humor is, <laughs> I ruined marriages. <laughs> and my dad never paid attention to me. I can kind of relate. Just kidding. Not going on in the world. I'm already out here a uh, husband stiller. And yeah. this is too much. And ain't nobody out here stealing husbands. Right. Well, we needed subtitles. I would never. What are you saying, honey? A lot of single people in the building last night, so um, I don't think it's nobody want to steal nobody else's problems. I dare you. Yeah, but you did. Oh, you guys waited until you were officially broken up to start sleeping with a married man. You're a woman of integrity. You're on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. When I hear the sentence, I'm on the show, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, I think of a classy woman you want to bring home to dinner. I'm not saying she's not a fun time. I'm not saying she's not a delight, but don't act like she's some innocent angel. I ruined marriages and I have no integrity. (laughs) Oh my God. In the lawsuit, Malomine alleges that Nini and Naomi Sella engaged in an ongoing romantic, uninhibited, and adulterous affair without her knowledge or consent. E.T. has reached out to Nini's reps for comment. That same day, the reality star posted this video with her boyfriend all smiles while cruising in the car listening to a love song, Money Long's Hours and Hours. 
Oh, yeah. Nothing makes me think of uh, romance like the rapper Money Long. Oh, yeah. It just speaks out all the romance in the world. Also, whenever uh, these side chicks post the videos uh, with their significant others when they're being accused of cheating, a lot of times they'll put up videos and it's called overcompensating because you got caught like a rodent in an alley in New York City. We know you ruined a marriage. We know you love the guy. Whatever. It's only time until one of you cheat on each other because when a relationship begins with cheating, it's going to probably end with cheating. It's not really a relationship of integrity or a character. Well, it does have character, but it's that of being a slimy, home-wrecking loser. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment, like I said, was brought to you by Mattress by Appointment, Hillsboro. And I tell you that Dwayne the Mattress Guy is the best around. I am a man of my words. A13-452-5555. It's A13-452-5555. And when you call Dwayne the Mattress Guy, say you heard about it on... Happy hour. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. And that's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah. 856-49-HOPPY. 856 856- Four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hobby Radio, and you can always email me Ryan Hobby Radio at gmail.com. And you can also Snapchat me at Ryan Hobby Radio. No happy hot topic. So I get. That when you are a woman, especially when you're in the entertainment business, you always have to look young. You always have to look beautiful because you are afraid that you're going to get replaced. I get it. I really, really do. But sometimes I feel like the aging process is kind of underrated. I think the aging process is kind of cool because not everybody gets to be old. So when I see all these influencers out there, you know, finding new weird ways to be young. I go, uh, yeah, it's cool. But at the end of the day, you're going to either become, you know, a cremated little box or you're going to be laying in the ground. It doesn't matter. But some of these women, man, and dudes too, I guess, but usually women, they always have to look young, have to look young, have to look young. And um, some of the ways have been Botox and... um. Now, Kim Kardashian has a way that is a little unorthodox. Kim Kardashian has a way that's a little weird. And we're about to find out about it right now. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. You're probably already offended. Kim Kardashian says she would do anything to stay young. Ah, man, that's her having a midlife crisis. But no, really, anything. They would say that was like so inappropriate. While chatting with the New York Times, the reality star reveals the length she's willing to go to for youthful looks. What? Kim kicks off the interview by saying, quote, I'll try anything. We know. We've seen it on tape. That's the beauty of it. Then she gets a little specific and with a side of TMI. Kim says, quote, if you told me that I literally had to eat poop every single day and I would look younger, I might. I just might. Oh, my God. I mean, I get it. Blah, blah, blah. I get it. You want to look young, but, like, damn. That's gross. And I'm not someone that's usually offended. But I find going to the bathroom and I find fecal to be the grossest thing ever. I think if you think that 
poop jokes are funny, that you are lowbrow, that you're not very creative, that you're not very witty, that you don't have much going for you. So that's kind of what's going on with the Kardashians. They're essentially saying we have to look hot in order to be famous, but that's the reason they were famous in the first place. So I'm not really that surprised. But I'm just saying, like, aging is beautiful. Not everybody gets to be old. I mean, I think you have to do whatever you're comfortable with. And Kim is living very comfortable as a beauty mogul. According to the article, Kim's net worth is estimated to be around a billion dollars. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, because of a sex tape that wasn't even that good. But you got to give it up to her, man. You got to really applaud her. Because you got Bella Thorne on OnlyFans and the Cash Me Outside girl, even though I don't really want to see her naked. But you got all these celebrities like, oh, I'm on OnlyFans, and they're not doing anything. Uh, Kim Kardashian, man, she really put it out there. So even if the tape was average, and even if, you know, she's starting to get a little old, I mean, not that big of a deal. That's thanks to her many beauty and fashion ventures over the years. Yeah. The latest of which is Skin, Kim's new skincare line. If the name sounds familiar, it's because it seems like a wordplay off of Kim's successful shapewear and clothing brand, Skims. Oh, I get what they did there. The writing team with the Kardashians is really hilarious. I think my mission in launching Skin is just that to make money because I have nothing else to do because I have no redeeming talent, but we're good marketers. I really have always been this girl that loves to share my tips and my tricks. With uh, I thought she was going to say someone else when she said, uh, when she began with tips, replace the P with a T. Well, as a key figure in the beauty industry for over a decade, Kim isn't afraid to admit her appearance takes a lot of work. Ah, yeah, you don't just wake up out of bed and look like that. You gotta do operations and eat poop. She explains to the outlet, so many people want to act like they don't care about how they look. I'm I mean, that's it's true. But I'm growing out my hair right now, and I'm starting to look a little rugged, a little edgy, and I'm cool with it. I'm just saying. Not acting like it comes easier or it's all natural. You don't just wake up and use whatever. You wake up, you use ingredients. The PRP facials, stem cell facials. Later. Yeah, facials. All of that is work. Um, Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I think it'd be hilarious if they just quit wearing makeup. Because they're already famous. They're already billionaires, and people would watch anyway. I think they should never put on makeup again. They should just keep their hair in a bun like they're going to Publix on a Saturday morning after a jog to get some food. Just look awful. I think it'd be hilarious. As Kim tells it, when it comes to beauty tips, sharing is caring. Oh, yeah. What I've always been really um, into and what I've always loved and what I really feel like my brand is, is taking things that I've learned along the way, whether it's- Like having sex and getting famous off of it. That's what I've learned. And that's what I can explain to you. Get famous and have sex on camera. Been from top facialists. Yeah. Chemist or dermatologist. Yeah. And giving you guys my secrets that I've learned, like I would give my sisters. And this is similar to what Kim told E.T. back in 2017, around the time her little sister Kylie Jenner was on her way to her own billion-dollar empire. Oh, man. I wonder what their relationship and their conversations were like. I bet the deepest conversations come between Kylie and Kim. <laughs> oh, those deep conversations. Are you competitive about who can find the best bronzer and the best product? You know what? We're not really competitive, and it's crazy because... We're in the same business, mm. but I think we have really different products. And yeah, Kim's going more for the midlife crisis, and uh, Kylie's going more for the, oh, my God, I don't know how to tell my boyfriend to pull out kind of like life. We really work at that together. Uh yeah, you do. Next time, film it. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah, this following segment was brought to you by... FitStageFitness.net. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best trainer in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. I would not steer you in the wrong direction. Fit underscore Sage underscore Fitness on Instagram. 
And if you live within the Tampa Bay area, you can always work out with Devin Prasad. But don't worry. Don't have a panic attack if you don't live in the Bay Area. And I used to say, but you're missing out. But now I want to tell you the Bay Area sucks so you guys can all quit moving from the north. But if you don't live in the Bay Area, you can always work out with Devin virtually. For all the info, fitsagefitness.net. Well, it was good while it lasted, I guess. But, Sheriff, the glory hole is the pride and joy of Dougal County. Fella found an even older glory hole two towns over. Lord knows I ain't looking forward to telling the tourism board about this. Such an elegant concept. A simple, lowly hole to commemorate his glory. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, what up? Here it is. What's going on? Most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yeah. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hobby Radio, and you can always email me. Ryan Hobby Radio at gmail.com. Uh, let's get right back into the news. I never liked the show Glee. It's not really for my demographic because I'm heterosexual. It's not really for my uh, gender because I'm not a woman. But that guy that played the teacher, Matthew Morrison, always creeped me out. He always gave me bad vibes. And I didn't know he was on So You Think You Can Dance. But he was, and he got in trouble and got fired. I think this is much bigger than me and this story. Matthew Morrison is speaking out. Gossip is toxic and it is destroying our society. I'm not going to even get into the clip yet, but I love when somebody gets caught doing something and then they go the route of, feel bad for me, I'm a victim of gossip because I did something I shouldn't have been doing. And we need to do better. This comes after the actor was fired as a judge on So You Think You Can Dance, following allegations that he sent flirty text messages to a contestant. Oh, yeah. But I was just trying to help her dance. Wanting to set the record straight, Matthew takes to Instagram on Thursday. Nothing says official like making a video on Instagram. That's when you know it's official. Shut up! He shares the alleged text message that kicked off the controversy. Hey, baby, what are you wearing? Which Matthew also claims is the only message in question. It's really unfortunate that I have to sit here and defend myself yeah. and my family. Oh, yeah, you're probably cheating, right? <laughs> what an ass wipe. Against blatantly untrue statements made anonymously. Yeah. But I have nothing to hide. Oh. So in the interest of transparency, I will read to you the one message that I wrote to a dancer on the show. Hey, baby, what are you wearing? Hey, it's Matthew. If you don't mind, would love to get your number and talk you through some things. The end. Hey, but the thing is, if you had nothing to hide, you could say, hey, I want to help you learn how to dance or something. But when you say talk through, talk through some things, it kind of makes you think that you were trying to get to know them to kind of, you know, not really groom them, but manipulate them into having sex with you. You scumbag leech. You make all men look bad. I sent this because this dancer and I both share a mutual respect for a choreographer that I've known for over 20 years, and I was trying to help her get a job as a choreographer on the show. It's it's devastating that we live in this world where gossip rules and people's lives. Yeah, uh, you signed up for the entertainment business. That's what happens. You were on one of the biggest musical shows of all time, being Glee. I don't feel bad for you. Oh, you have to deal with gossip because you broke the rules? No, not for Matthew Morrison. We should bow down to you and let you get away with things. You pretty boy scumbag. Those lives are being thrown around as clickbait. Mm -hmm. Matthew continues blasting the circumstances that led to his firing and ends the video with a message for his former co-workers. Hey, kiss my ass. I think this is much bigger than me and this story. Gossip is toxic and it is destroying our society. I am a saint. I'm a martyr. I'm here to save the day. Shut up. And we need to do better. And in no way do I want this to take away from the show because dance Oh, but it is. 
If I didn't want to take away from the show, I wouldn't have talked about it. But I'm talking about it, and I'm taking away from the show. Shut up. Just be honest. Just be genuine. Oh, you were on the show Glee. Oh, you were a TV uh, judge for dancing. You're not really genuine. You don't have a real bone in your body. This has always been a unifying and healing modality, and I genuinely wish all the contestants and my fellow judges all the best. Passive aggressive. This comes as E.T. learns new details about the scandal. What happened? A source tells us, quote, Matthew wasn't aware of the no contact rule in his judge's contract for So You Think You Can Dance. Yeah, you need to know that, bro. Oh, I thought you were so put together and you knew everything. The source adds, quote, Matthew has previous experience working on dance shows in the UK where collaborating with contestants was encouraged. He didn't think this was going to be an issue. But it was. You broke the rules. Oh, feel bad for me. Shut up. So what happens now? We what? move on and remember that he was once somebody, and then we forget about him. No one's going around going, oh, no, I hope Matthew Morrison does okay. So, because most of the series has already been filmed, we may continue to see Matthew at the judge's table. This Awkward. This is all about bettering yourself. Before the season premiere last month, Matthew shared his excitement with E.T. on the set. I, I don't care. 856-49. Happy to take 56-494-6773. I got sad news. They're ending the reel. No! We have made our mark. Um, I was talking to my mom earlier this morning. She knows that, you know, this is the farewell show. And she was just telling, telling me, like, you guys really did break the mold yeah, of daytime yeah. television. I'm not saying the real didn't break the mold for daytime television, but why are you getting canceled? Second of all, if you're really breaking the mold for daytime TV, you don't have to tell everybody you're breaking the mold for daytime TV because we'd already know you break, you were breaking the mold for daytime TV. I'm just saying, when you have to let everybody know about your accomplishments, you're not really breaking the mold. The real co-hosts are getting emotional as they say goodbye after eight seasons. No! There was never a show that looked like us. Right. I mean, that's that's true, but why are you guys not being picked up by another network? I'm sure the ratings were through the roof. <laughs> Everybody wanted to watch the real, because you guys were real. And I'm so grateful, yeah. and I hope that we yeah. are not the last. Okay. The hit talk show, which features co-hosts Adrian Houghton, Lonnie Love, Jeannie Mai, and Garcelle Beauvais, will air... Oh, uh, Lonnie Love, she's so funny. ...air their final episode on June 3rd. In Get it? Lonnie Love, she's really loud. It's like I'm looking at myself in the mirror, but I'm just not Lonnie Love. In the preview, Lonnie reflects on the impact they've made on daytime programming. Oh, wow. The whole purpose of the show mm. um, was that we would put on people that normally would not get on daytime yeah. talk. You know, and we were able to talk about things that no some people, they just ignore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so True. you really have to, when you look back at eight seasons, over 1,300 episodes, it's phenomenal. I'm not saying they didn't put in a good little legacy or whatever, but when you're having to let everybody know everything you accomplished, like you can say what you want about Ellen, DeGener Ellen DeGeneres, but in her uh, goodbye message, she was saying goodbye to the fans, and we know it wasn't genuine. We know it was a sack of crap, but she was like, oh, we broke some uh, records on here. We were able to talk about gay rights and that. She talked about what she accomplished. She wasn't like, oh, I was popular, blah, blah, blah. When you have to let everybody know how great you're doing, oh, I'm so funny, I'm a comedian. You're probably not that good. And it's his story. Yeah. And then the, it's like James Corden leaving the, uh, not Tonight Show, whatever show, whatever the James Corden show is. What I'm saying to you is this. I am saying that you don't really leave a show that is that big. You know what I mean? Like, if that show is so good, it would get picked up by another network. If that show was so good, it wouldn't leave. Because what are they going to do? I know Lonnie Love's name because she's the celebrity on the show. But who are the other people going to What are they going to do? They look like everybody you see in Los Angeles. Oh, I was on a show called The Real. I bet people that are working at Ralph's in Los Angeles, the grocery shop, I sh I'm sure some of the baggers have been on TV. You get forgotten about real quick. We've already forgotten about you. Happy hour. Happy hour. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Happy Hour will be right back. This following segment was brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com. When I tell you that West Chase Printing has the best posters, business cards, yard signs, banners, whatever the hell you need, WestChasePrinting.com can make it happen. I'm looking up here at my Happy Hour with Ryan Hoppy banner that I have here at the Happy Hour headquarters. And that's called the West Chase Printing. And go to WestChasePrinting.com. And if you had gone before hearing this live read, Tone, DJ Tone Tampa, at DJ Tone Tampa, at West Chase Printing on Instagram, he would have hooked you up with a great deal. But when you go there and you name drop me, oh, it's going to hook you up. Happy hour. Happy hour. Doctors say the life expectancy of the average man is now 76.2 years. <gasps> 76.2, but I'm already 38.1. I've wasted half my life. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Elliot Page admits he was not okay after his breakout role in 2007's Juno. Wow, that was in 2007. How time flies. Also, yeah, I mean, with Elliot, formerly, um, I don't remember it anymore. Yeah, he identifies as a he, now it's Elliot. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I can imagine being in a movie that young can kind of change you a little bit, can kind of make you feel like you always have to make something as good as Juno. What, are you, are you ashamed that we did it? Oh, geez. No. Because at least you don't have to have the evidence under your sweater. Mm. Elliot looks incredible as the cover star for Esquire magazine's summer issue. Inside, the actor reveals after the success of the teen pregnancy flick, the pressure to discuss the film at splashy industry events literally did almost kill me. Quote, I was closeted, dressed in heels, and the whole look. I wasn't okay, and I didn't know how to talk about that with anyone. Yeah, since Elliot is now a man and identifies as a man, I can assume being in a movie where you're a pregnant woman probably wasn't his vibe, probably wasn't digging it. Which kind of makes sense, because when you look at what Elliot used to be, what Elliot used to identify as, you can kind of tell... She was pretty and all, but you can tell she wasn't comfortable being a woman and she was meant to be Elliot, which is fine. I don't care. Elliot recalls a specific instance while promoting Juno at the Toronto International Film Festival. Elliot Every time I hear Elliot, I just think of Elliot in the morning in Washington, D.C. on DC 101. <laughs> You have to be a radio fan to know what that laugh was about. Elliot says his manager told him to put on a dress for the red carpet, but his co-star, Michael Sarah was in slacks and sneakers. Yeah, Michael Sarah's just like, I'm here, hanging out. Quote, I've had people who apologize about things. Sorry, I didn't know. I didn't know at the time. It doesn't matter if I'm trans or cis. Lots of cis women dress how I dress. My, my thing. You can do whatever you want in his lifetime. That's all I got to say. I hope everyone's happy. I hope they get to identify as whatever the hell they want to identify as. The pressure to live up to gender expectations is a feeling Elliot says was far too familiar in his early to mid-20s. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing with Elliot. And I'm not trying to sound like a douchebag, but I'm just saying... It's not that no one forced you to, you know, be in Juno. But think about it this way. Unless it was like a Will Wheaton situation where he didn't want to do any movies in the 80s, but his parents forced him. 
Did anybody hold a gun to Elliot's head and was like, oh my God, you're going to be in this movie? Was there a gun held to Elliot's head during every scene with Michael Sarah and Juno? I don't remember guns being in Juno. So I feel bad that you were probably exploited a little bit and you probably didn't want to do the movie and that. But you're acting like no one forced you to do it. I understand that you were identifying as a guy even when you were a woman. I get that you weren't in the right skin. I get that you wanted to be a man, and now you are, and you identify as a man. And that is wonderful. That is beautiful. I truly don't care. I truly don't get transphobic people or homophobic people. I don't care what you do. I don't care. But don't act like a victim and be like, oh, it was so hard making millions. Like, then why did you do it? The actor explains he didn't know how to tell people how unwell he was at the time. I was that, that's fine and all, but take back the money you made from Juno then. I was, yeah, I, I was acting too, so yeah. going to set every day and, mm. and changing into clothes that, you know, really made me feel ill. Ellie. It's probably because he had to play a woman. It just had to be a little awkward for him. Kid who's been open about his battle with body dysmorphia adds, I struggled with food, intense depression, anxiety, severe panic attacks. I couldn't function. You and half of Hollywood, I'm just saying. I collapsed. And that was something that's happened wow. frequently in my life. All right. I wish Elliot nothing but the best in life. But on the opposite side, I wish nothing but average things for this dirty, rotten woman. Now about Oscar night, yeah. my deepest hope is that these two intelligent, capable men have an opportunity to heal, talk this out, and reconcile. Shut Jada up. Pinkett Smith addresses that infamous Oscar slap between her husband, Will Smith, and Chris Rock. And yeah, forgot about that. Not at all. I hear about it every single day. Jada Pinkett Smith, it is insane. She literally looks like an evil villain. Not just not not because she's bald, just her demeanor. There is not an attractive bone in her body. She's hot as hell, but she's you know like when a girl is so unlikable. And I guess this could work with dudes, but I can only speak as a heterosexual man talking about women. Uh, you ever see somebody so beautiful and they got such an awful personality that an actual ugly person is better looking than them? And gets candid about living with scarring alopecia on the latest Red Table Talk. The more that we can bring... Oh, okay, I'm not saying that alopecia is not a big deal. But you don't have cancer. You're not dying of cancer. Relax. And I'm not trying to sound insensitive. I get that it's probably nerve-wracking to have. I'm not saying alopecia is not a big deal. I'm not talking it down. I'm not ignoring it. I'm just telling you there's worse things to have. Scarring alopecia on the latest Red Table Talk. Yeah. The more that we can bring these difficult subjects to light and talk about it, the more we can purify these subjects. Let's start by rewinding to Oscars night. Chris all right. But you can talk about the subjects all you want, but put them into perspective. But the problem is that Jada Pinkett Smith is a sociopath. The problem is Jada Pinkett Smith is a bad person. So it's hard for her to feel any emotion. Chris makes a joke about Jada's shaved head, and the actress looks visibly upset. Yeah. Of course, Jada has publicly discussed her struggles with alopecia, a hair loss disease. And I get that. I get that. I get that. But, like, wear a wig and relax. Not that big of a deal. You're a millionaire. So her husband, Will, took the matters into his own hands, literally. <laughs> <gasps> Only three months old. At the time, a source told E.T. Jada was glad that Will stood up for her. Yeah. And added that she was hurt by Chris's remark. The it was a funny joke. Oh, but sociopaths, people with borderline personality disorder. Now, I'm not a shrink. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a professional. But I will tell you that Jada Pinkett Smith has something, man. She is not a good person. It was a funny joke. Relax. She's never relaxed a day in her life. Unless she's banging her son's friends, which I know people want to go, oh, that's gross and all. But Will Smith is the one that probably wanted the open marriage. When you open up the floodgates, anything can happen. 
Why? I'll have dudes hit me up and be like, hey, you want to like swap your girlfriend with me and then you get my average looking girlfriend? I'm like, no, she's all mine. Comedian declined to press charges and the King Richard actor has since been banned from future Academy events for 10 years. What a punishment. You don't have to go to the uh, uh, you don't have to go to the Academy Awards. Oh, wow, you're really punishing him. You're not making him go to one of the most pretentious, fake, low ratings events? Oh, no. It sounds like a vacation. Chris has yet to address the incident directly, though he did poke fun at it at a Dave Chappelle show. Yeah, everything goes on. Everything goes on at a Dave Chappelle show. Those shows are crazy, man. You walk in offended and you leave even more offended. I feel like people that go to Chris Rock shows or they go to Dave Chappelle shows just to be offended. Now Jada is using that viral moment to turn a new chapter, and she's asking for reconciliation. Nah. I think you should just shut up. The state of the world today, we need them both. And oh, no, yeah, yeah. With the inflation and gas prices going up and rent through the roof, if Chris Rock and Will Smith get along, all the problems will go away, you out of touch bitch. We all actually need one another more than ever. Until then, Will and I are continuing to do what we have done for the last 28 years. Have a loveless marriage and be a bunch of phony baloney losers. And let's keep figuring out this thing called life together. And you're failing at it. <laughs> Jada also shares how headlines about Chris's joke sent the alopecia community into an uproar, which made... Oh, no. No. You don't have cancer. Relax. I'm not saying it's not a big deal to have it, but you can have worse things. Her want to shine a spotlight on the autoimmune disorder. I think that people don't understand what alopecia is and they don't... No, we get it. We just think there's worse things out there. Again... Not like it's not bad, but the problem is she's entitled. She's rich, she's out of touch, and she doesn't know that there's worse things out there. She's a woman who's famous that always needs to be beautiful and has to always kind of work around the obstacle of being bald. <sighs> Shut up. I don't yeah. understand the effects of it. Jada says one heartbreaking story of a young woman struggling with the disease inspired her to educate the audience about alopecia's effects. Oh, I'm sure you totally felt the emotion. You didn't just ask your writers, hey, find something about alopecia and let's pretend that I was inspired about it so I can show some fake emotion because I am a robot. Happy hour. Happy hour. The hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by Rich Keeley, Master Barbershop. And I tell you that Rich Keeley is the best barber around. I'm a man of my words. RichKBarber.com. Go there. Tell him I sent you. And if you got to wait a few days for the appointment, don't worry. Don't have a panic attack. It'll all work out. Just go to RichKBarber.com. And when you sit down, tell him I sent you. Happy hour. Happy hour. This little Bizarre. guy. Bizarre. Buddy, if I had a peanut, I'd give Bizarre. it to you. Bizarre. I love you. Bizarre. I love you. Hey, who's Bizarre. got a peanut for turtle face? Don't. He's allergic. They're kill me. This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Every Thursday at 5 p.m. East Coast time, 4 p.m. Central, and I believe that would be 2 p.m. Pacific, Happy Hour is syndicated on Z Radio Live at ZRadioLive.com. And also, you can listen on the Odyssey app. 
And you can listen on TuneIn by searching up Z Radio Live, the best top 40 radio around. Also, we are featured on Quad Pod, QOD, POD.com slash Ryan Hoppy, the best podcasting network around. No! Happy Hot Topic! Is it really over for Michael B. Jordan and Lori Harvey? Yeah, probably. Who cheated? The pair has reportedly broken up after more than a year of dating. Oh, I bet Steve Harvey is going to be in such a bad mood finding out that his daughter is now single. He's probably going to be happy, too. Like, I feel like he's indifferent. He seems a little too protective of her. A source tells People Magazine that both stars are, quote, completely heartbroken over the split and, quote, still love each other. Access Hollywood has reached out to both Michael and Lori's respective reps for comment. Neither the 35-year-old actor nor the 25-year-old model had publicly responded to the news as of Saturday. According to People, Michael was, quote, ready to commit for the long term, adding that the Black Panther star and the beauty influencer, quote, brought out the best in each other. That's the problem. If she's 10 years younger, she wants to kind of hang out and bang some more people. And he's like, I want to get married and have kids. Yeah. The pair seemed smitten after confirming their romance in January 2021, Mm. making frequent appearances on one another's social media from celebrating birthdays to enjoying time at the beach. I got some breaking news to tell you guys. Some breaking news has just come in to the Happy Hour headquarters. Guess what? I mean, this is something you might not be aware of. This is something you might not know about. When you post on social media that your relationship's all wonderful and dandy, especially celebrities, it's not always correct. You can sometimes hide behind a smile. Look at Robin Williams. Look at Brian Laundrie. And that angel, rest in peace. I'm just saying, social media, oh, they look so happy. Oh, for two seconds? Shut up. 856-49-HOPPY. They last stepped out together in March for the Vanity Fair Oscars party, which also marked their red carpet debut. Yes, mark that down. That was a big moment. They walked on the red carpet. They're so brave. Last month, Lori hit the Met Gala and the Cannes Film Festival solo. Ah, the Met Gala where everybody looks like trash, but you pretend they're beautiful. But if you saw them at Target, you would judge them and post it on a website. Back in November, the duo celebrated their one-year anniversary, and Michael told Access Hollywood at the A Journal for Jordan premiere just weeks later how having love in his life prepared him for his role in the film as a husband and father. Oh, this breakup's going to really hit Michael B. Jordan hard. Everybody acts like dudes have no emotion most of the time. But man, a good breakup really ruins a dude and makes him better. I think it's just the way I am in my life. I think, um, yeah. like you said, I've passed on projects before because I just felt like I didn't live enough. You know, now that I kind of can tap into something real, a personal experience, you, you know, as actors, you want to bring as, as much of yourself as you can to it. Whatever. Uh, best theme song, though. Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> what up, Uncle Tommy? Yeah. But Steve Harvey. He does have a lot of listeners. Woo! Steve Harvey. Can Lori come home with me? No! Happy Hot Topic! Ah, that was funny. Get it? No! Happy Hot Topic! Kardashian is defending her... Co- ah, that transition was not perfect. Here we go. Kim Kardashian is defending her controversial decision to lose 16 pounds in three weeks in order to squeeze into her Met Gala look. Oh no, you lost weight? That affects our life. 
The 41-year-old reality star wore Marilyn Monroe's famous happy birthday dress to fashion. I like how she said that. Famous. One-year-old reality star wore Marilyn Monroe's famous, famous happy birthday dress to fashion's biggest night in May. Many, including actress Lily Reinhardt, criticized her for how quickly she lost the weight. Saying, no, you lost weight? Heaven forbid you do something with your body. And these same people would be the ones that are for abortion rights. But, oh, Kim Kardashian did something with her body? Oh, you're a bunch of hypocrites. I got to tell you two words. Shut up! The decision didn't promote body positivity. But now, in an interview with the New York Times, Kim is defending her decision, saying, quote, Uh, it didn't promote body positivity. What is positive about the Kardashians? Tell me. Oh. To me, it was like, okay, Christian Bale can do it for a movie role, and that is acceptable. Hell yeah, girlfriend. Even Renee Zellweger gained weight for a role. It's all the same to me. I wasn't saying, hey, everyone, why don't you go lose this weight in a short period of time? You could tell that she's got a little bit of that lawyer in her. It's a good line. The Skims founder told The Times that she lost the weight by changing her diet, running twice a day, and wearing a sauna suit. Well, the last one's weird. The first two, anybody can do. She also reiterated that she, quote, didn't do anything unhealthy to fit into the iconic dress. Well, that's a lie. But what if she didn't make the weight in time for the Met in order to fit into Marilyn's dress? Mm. Quote, I just simply couldn't have gone, which wouldn't have mattered. It was just important to me to reach that goal. She All righty. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. She told the Times. Well, Kim did make it to this year's Met and donned the crystal-covered column gown that Marilyn famously wore in 1962. Oh, and I love how everybody's offended that she wore Marilyn's outfit. Marilyn was a home wrecker. Don't act like she was some angel. When she sang happy birthday to President John F. Kennedy. Oh, yeah, they were just friends. Once again, not like she's a home wrecker. Three months prior to her death. Oh, that sucks. Her interview with the Times isn't the first time the Kardashian star has defended herself for losing the weight. She doesn't have to defend herself for anything. Only thing you should defend yourself for is making an awful porno. Happy hour. Happy hour. Oh, yeah. Happy hour will be right back. This following segment was brought to you by Mattress by Appointment, Hillsboro, A13452. Five 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 five. It's a one three four five two five 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 five. When you tell Dwayne the mattress guy that you heard about it on Happy Hour, he will hook you up once again. A one three four five two five 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 five. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Someone hook me up with a flame. I'm having a look for. Uh, light him up. Meet what? Here. Encourage him in his habit. That's a good smoker. When did you start smoking? This morning. I rose my wrist and I'm going to tear up. We shall acquire some wine on the way to the mall. And then you can get tore up. And pass out in the hot sun. That's my boss. I don't think Meatwad should be hanging around with these moon people. He never holds back and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah. A56 49 Hoppy. Watch out. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at Chivo.com. Snapchat me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. This following show has been brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. When I tell you that Amir Academy is the best around, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. He's a man of honor. He's a man of class. And he's a man of dignity. Amiracademy.com. This has also been brought to you by, let me see if I got anything else. You can go to RyanHoppyRadio.com. There has all the platforms that you can listen to Happy Hour on. Spotify, TuneIn, Spreaker, Amazon Music, Google Play, Podcasts, Deezer, Odyssey, all of it. Uh, anything else? I'm looking at my website. Blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 da. I think that's about it. Oh, happy 
Hey, hot topic! Shakira, Shakira! It's over for Shakira and Gerard Piquet. No! The longtime couple announced in a joint statement obtained by Access Hollywood on Saturday that... Oh, they obtained it first. I'm glad you guys were on it, Access Hollywood. You guys are so cool. You obtained it first. They have decided to part ways after more than a decade together. Yeah. We regret to confirm that we are separating. No! We ask for privacy at this moment for the well-being of our children, who are our maximum priority. You should just not have even announced it. Like... Have the rumors go out and just don't say anything. But when you say, please respect our privacy, do I think you deserve the privacy? Yes. But when you say that, you're not really going to manifest it because then people will want to know more. Thank you in advance for your understanding and respect. The message read. They're saying thank you in advance. I say. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. The music icon and the soccer star are parents to two sons, nine-year-old Milan and seven-year-old Sasha. I wonder what it's like knowing you're never going to bang Shakira again. Shakira and Gerard first confirmed their relationship back in 2011 yeah. after meeting on the set of the singer's music video for her World Cup theme, Waka Waka. <laughs> oh, soccer. The whole world, but America cares. Bizarre. They it is so fucking boring. It's unbelievable. At least with hockey, there has to be a finish. If a game ends in a draw, you're not for me, man appear together on social media in a valentine's day tribute posted on shakira's instagram oh i think the moral that we learned from today is that what you post on social media is not real life just saying the 45 year old songstress and the 35 year old athlete have yeah. also shared peaks at their family life throughout the years including this cute snap from a 2020 trip to the maldives Ah, oh, so, again, you never know what social media is going to provide. False narratives. Gerard is said to be living on his own in Barcelona, away from Shakira and the kids. Ah, oh, so he's a deadbeat. In addition to the breakup, the Colombian icon is also navigating other personal upheaval. In a Twitter message over the weekend, Shakira clarified reports that she was seen in an ambulance recently. That sucks. I hate deadbeat dads. It's unfortunate that she married one and had two kids with it. Explaining that her father sadly took a, quote, bad fall earlier this month. That sucks. And she had accompanied him to the hospital where he is. Ah, is he doing good? He's currently recuperating. That's good. 856-49-HOPPY. Speaking of someone that's been to the hospital a lot. Nick Cannon takes pride in being there for his kids. Yeah, I don't know how to pull out. I'm going to have kids and pretend that I have so much time with them, even though they're in like seven different houses. And Los Angeles has a lot of traffic, and I have, like, seven jobs, so I have two hours with them. But I'm a good father. <laughs> Shut up. The soon-to-be dad of eight defended his parenting journey in a new interview with Men's Health. And he shouldn't have to defend it. The fact that he's defending it, he knows he's wrong. And set the record straight on just how present he is as a father. Oh, he's so, so present. But he's there all the time for them. <laughs> oh, Nick Cannon. Shut up! A 41-year-old is expecting his eighth child this year and told the mag that he's, quote, involved in everything his older kids do, from coaching to guitar lessons, and he keeps up his daily dad routine even when he's out of town. Oh, yeah. Saying, quote, Contrary to popular belief, I'm probably engaged throughout my children's day more often than the average adult can be. If no, I you're not. You're the same as us. You're going to die someday in your poop. Shut up. Oh, I'm better than you because I'm famous. Shut the fuck up. I'm not physically in the same city with my kids. I'm talking to them before they go to school via FaceTime and stuff. And then when I am in the same city, I'm driving my kids to school, like making sure I pick them up. Oh, you're doing fatherly duties. Wow. Nick is dad, the 10-year-old twins, Moroccan and Monroe with ex-wife Mariah Carey. Oh, yeah, she was pretentious. <laughs> Plus, uh, whenever you date Mariah Carey, one thing happens. You are whipped. Five-year-old son, Golden, and one-year-old daughter, Powerful Queen, with Britney <laughs> Bell, and nine-month-old twins, Zion and Zillion, with Abby De La Rosa. His youngest, son, Zen, with Alyssa Scott, sadly died of brain cancer in December at just five months old. Weeks later, Nick confirmed that Brie Teasy was pregnant with the newest Canon baby. Here's my thing. So their kid died, and, and I don't know which... There's so many moms, it's hard to keep up with. Um... But if he produced the kid while the kid was dying, like if he didn't know the kid was, 
Like, why are you having more kids? He knew. <sighs> loser. Deadbeat loser. Earlier this year, the TV personality reflected on balancing his grief for Zen with his happiness about expanding his family again. Why? You have too many, bro. God. And there's so many responsible people that want kids. It's literally the basis of the movie Idiocracy. In an on-air monologue on his daytime talk show, Nick expressed regret for how he discussed private family matters in public, telling viewers that he was sorry for not handling certain personal situations more delicately. You don't have to be sorry. Say sorry to your legacy and to your kids and to all the women you've knocked up. It doesn't matter what our, what we think. We're just peasants to you. And sending a specific apology to the mothers of his children. Ah, uh, he's a pussy. I misspoke and yeah. uh, probably went too much into detail on Monday expressing my feelings. And oh, so you had a real moment on TV? That means you're fake. I actually showed real emotion. Please, cancel me. And it felt like I was probably making some comparatives or probably discussing when talking. Comparisons, not comparatives. Oh, he's a great daytime TV host. 856-49, Hoppy. You know how fast you're going? Uh, this motorcycle rider seemed surprised when he learned how fast he was allegedly going. So listen, I check your speed at 147. Yeah, bro, I got a small dick. I got to make it feel some vibration. I'm going to go 147 miles. I'm this fat dude with long hair that looks like a comic book nerd. I'm so cool, bro. It happened in Ohio where state... Yeah, of course. Ohio's small dick capital of the world. Highway patrol officers were scanning their roadways for traffic violations over Memorial Day weekend. The agency reported over 26,000 traffic enforcement contacts. But this stop was memorable to them because of how fast they say the rider was going. The speed limit is 65 miles per hour, which means this man was allegedly going 82 miles over the limit. He I'm seemed a fucking loser, bro. I need the speed rush because I think I need Magnum condoms and I've been having sex the wrong way my whole life. Unaware of his vehicle's ability to even go that fast. Oh. If you're not aware of what your vehicle can do, you probably shouldn't be driving it. I think you should be aware of what it's doing. I mean, I didn't know. Uh, it, like, uh, like, yeah, uh, I, I, still, I still have it. Uh, it still shows 147. Uh, uh, my, my neighbors much, must just think I'm losing my mind. 856-49-Hoppy. The Las Vegas wedding scene is about to get all shook up. <laughs> the chapels are being told to stop the unauthorized use of Elvis Presley's name, likeness, voice image, and other elements of Elvis Presley's persona. It's Good, I want Elvis to go away. <laughs> He's the worst. He sucks. A huge blow to the Vegas wedding industry. Yeah, huge blow. <laughs> in two billion dollars a year let's get married man that's right that, it's, that was a spot-on impersonation of Elvis if I've ever heard one <laughs> year let's get married man that's right hey yeah, yeah, thank, thank you very that's like me going, going up there yeah thank you very much thank you very much thanks to the popular Elvis themed ceremonies that attract lovers from all around the world Damn. I probably can't play this because of copyright, but Elvis is dead and should stay that way. To the index of other news, and tonight Elon Musk has ordered Tesla employees to return to work in person full time. The policy. Oh, that's going to be good energy at work. Uh, we need to be back in the office. Yeah, because the people that aren't working hard at work are. At, are the people that aren't working hard at home are going to totally work even harder. When they're actually at work. I don't get it. It's a boomer thing. You gotta be in the office. The nine to five. Clock in. Clock out. Out of touch boomers that don't get money. That don't get that millennials are broke. Are the absolute worst. I hate people that are from a different generation that don't get it. And Elon Musk is an example. He made public in reports of a leaked email sent from the Tesla CEO to mm. company executives. Musk insisting the office needs to be the quote primary workplace Asked on Twitter about people. Oh, how many times have you hung out at the office and gotten to know your coworkers that you probably underpay? Not that much. Criticizing his decision, Musk responding, they should pretend to work somewhere else. And I bet they will. I don't think the environment at Tesla would be a good thing. 
Superstar LeBron James is America's newest billionaire tonight. Forbes report. Good for you, man. You came in 11th out of 12th place in the Western Conference. But hey, you're worth a billion dollars. It's almost like you're saying the last five years, even though you won a quarantine championship, that it's more about money than winning. Congratulations, LeBron. Reporting at age 37, LeBron is now the first active NBA player with a net worth of $1 billion. That's the key word, is active. That Michael Jordan did it after and won championships and was never beaten in the finals. But LeBron, let's kiss his ass. Jennifer Faison met her future husband, Spencer Heron, in college. He would go on to become a high school teacher, yeah. earning the coveted Teacher of the Year Award in Georgia. But their happy facade came crashing down just seven That's funny how that's a coveted award in Georgia. Teacher of the Year. Like, that's all you got in Georgia? I mean, have you been to Georgia? It sucks. Teacher of the Year Award in Georgia. But their happy facade came crashing down just seven years into their marriage when yeah. Jennifer discovered Spencer was leading a secret double life. <gasps> she tells her story in her number one podcast, Betrayal, and reveals to us the moment she uncovered the ugly truth. It was absolutely devastating. This person that I thought I knew, none of it was real. And yeah, let's do a true crime podcast about it. Riveting. And it just shattered everything. Yeah. An instant, everything changed. I walked. Yeah, like me moving on. I don't care. Mandy Moore is going to be a mama of two. Oh, good. Wow. That really improves our day. The This Is Us alum took to Instagram to announce that she's expecting her second kiddo, a baby boy with husband Taylor Goldsmith, this fall. My girlfriend's been binge watching This Is Us, and like, it's not a bad show, but it's just very NBC because it's clean. It's like if you were to have saltine crackers all day long. Like, it's not bad. The acting's not atrocious, but it is just so fucking boring. It's not bad, but I'm like, damn, dude. Finally. I love the fact that Hunter Biden is literally the biggest creep ever, but the liberal media protects him. Even Jimmy Kimmel interviewed him about that book that no one bought. All the things that Hunter Biden has been accused of, if Donald Trump Jr. or Eric Trump or Ivanka or if Donald Trump himself, the former president, if any of them did it or if Ted Cruz did it or Marco Rubio did it, they would all be persecuted. But the fact that the liberal media, and I listen, I don't lean for anybody. I haven't voted in 10 years. I fucking hated Trump. I fucking hated Hillary Clinton, that dumb piece of garbage. I despise Biden with all my heart. I hate him. I hated him when he was the vice president to Obama during the Obamacare announcement. And he whispers on a hot mic, this is a big fucking deal. I'm like, Shut the fuck up, you delusional, classless, creepy old man. You can say what you want about Donald Trump, but his kids are professional in the public eye. They may be scumbags behind the scenes, and they do sketchy things, but what elite billionaire doesn't? But everybody acts like Hunter Biden is not a problem, and it is such a fucking double standard. Oh, wait, liberals being two-faced? Who would have saw that coming? They're so genuine. More bad news for... Like, liberals will literally defend their own politicians because they don't want to admit they're wrong. Like, people that are liberal in California, the gas prices will go up to 20 bucks a gallon, and they'll be like, this isn't the liberal party's fault at all. <laughs> Shut up. You all suck, especially you liberals. For President Biden's train wreck son, Hunter, his yeah. ex-wife, Kathleen, is publishing a blockbuster memoir, If We Break. Detail Hell yeah. Bring him down. Telling Hunter's relentless drug use and infidelity. Yeah, he banged a hooker. I remember one of my friends who's really rich texted me the like this like Chinese server of Hunter Biden. And it was like him setting up like a POV camera. Like I saw Hunter Biden's dick. And it was him smoking a, a crack pipe while fucking a girl in a doggy position. If I was on the radio, I wouldn't say it, but this is the podcast. And I was like, this is repulsive, bro. Why are you even married? Yeah, I gotta make my dad proud. Oh yeah, your dad's such a good person. He thought she was losing her mind. An exclusive excerpt from the book is running in the latest issue of People. The magazine's Sandra Soberai Westfall spoke to Hunter's ex. How does Kathleen describe her time 
being married to Hunter Biden. It started out a, a dream in many ways. Money, money, money. <laughs> I have no redeeming talents. And now I got to write a book about a marriage that I had go on too long because I wanted attention. <laughs> oh, the original leader are worst. Oh, but um, no, no, no. We, we got a great president. Listen, here's my thing. You can think that Joe Biden was a better candidate than Trump. That's completely fucking fine. I don't care. I hated Trump. He pissed me off. I hate Biden. He pisses me off. But I hate when people are so liberal that they can't admit that Biden's failing because he's such a wordsmith. So the best way to get something done, if you if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to... Anyway... I'm, we're going to get a lot done. I'm going to end the show with these four minutes of our elected official, the sleepy man of the world. Search Happy Radio on every single platform. Stitcher, TuneIn, Spreaker, Mixcloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Odyssey, Deezer, Mixcloud, Happy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio, at Ryan Hoppy Radio on IG, Twitter, and Snapchat, and also Hoppy in the Morning on Twitter and IG and Happy Hour Radio. RyanHoppyRadio.com has been brought to you by AmirAcademy.com, FitsageFitness.net, RichKBarber.com, uh, Mattress by Appointment Hillsboro, A13-452-5555, and WestChasePrinting.com. All righty. I just said that funny. I'm taking after our president. I'm going to play this clip because you're never going to hear the embarrassments of our president because you might literally think he's not doing a bad job because a lot of times on TV, I'm convinced they show the two seconds that he has a complete sentence. So here we go. If you're in denial, that's fine. But as uh, Rashid Wallace used to say about basketball players scoring points, ball don't lie. I'm going to switch it up and say, Biden don't lie. Thank you for listening to Happy Hour. Now, here's a reminder. And for all the liberals that are triggered out there, oh, you can't show real proof that our president sucks. I'm about to. This has been Happy Hour. Bye. The cages. I just got one. You got me. Honestly, this doesn't really translate the video or it doesn't translate the radio because it's all visual. So I'm going to tweet it out at Ryan Happy Radio because you deserve to live a good life. And I don't want to crush my listener's brain by playing a brain dead president. I'm sorry about that. Can you please forgive me? Okay. Spread the word. This has been Happy Hour. Joe Biden sucks. Let's go, Brandon. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Like that, he's gone. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over.